Welcome to Research Perch from the Massage Therapy Foundation. Short, practical insights into massage therapy research and how it can benefit your practice. Hey everyone, Michael Reynolds here with the Massage Therapy Foundation and welcome back to Research Perch. I'm the chair of the marketing committee for the Massage Therapy Foundation and I'm here with Nikki Monk and Ruth Werner. Nikki, how's your day going? It's going great, thanks Michael. Awesome, and Ruth, is it another magical day on the uh, beautiful coast of it, Oregon? It certainly is. There's uh, <laughs> blue water and white caps today. Fantastic. Love it. Well, uh, as our audience hopefully knows by now, this is our third podcast, and our goal is to uh, take research articles from the IJTMB, which is the International Journal of Therapeutic Massage and Body Work, and kind of unpack them and get to know what the research says and how it can benefit our practice. So uh, shall we dig in? Sure. Let's go. All right. So today's article is uh, pretty interesting. I think a lot of people will enjoy this. Uh, it's actually called uh, Massage Efficacy Beliefs for Muscle Recovery from a Running Race. I know a lot of people use, uh, or I shouldn't say use, but um, believe that massage therapy does benefit recovery after running a race. Um, so, uh, Nikki, why don't you start us off and uh, kind of set the stage for what this study is telling us. Great, thanks. Um, the author of this uh, article and the primary investigator of the study was Albert Moraska um, up in Denver. And this article uh, is a really nice example of a cleanly designed and completed, analyzed, and reported study. The article reports results of a cross-sectional survey intended to identify efficacy beliefs of massage for muscle recovery. The study population was very specific, and they were individuals who had finished um, just finished a race, a 10K race, so about 6.2 6 miles. There were 745 folks that participated. We don't know what the proportion of total racers that participated in the study were, but 745 is a really robust number for respondents for a setup like this. Those who participated in the survey were asked to respond yes or no or unsure to the question, do you think massage would be beneficial for your muscle recovery from today's race? For the purposes of this study, the respondents of no and unsure were combined to create a two-level yes-no or, or dichotomous outcome variable. Um, the group differences in this efficacy belief outcome variable was analyzed for age, gender, prior massage use, use and um, race-related variables such as the finish time, time since race completion, perceived exertion, fatigue, and muscle soreness. The, Quick and dirty results were that 80% of the respondents believed that massage would be beneficial in their muscle recovery, but that only 44% of respondents had actually received a massage before. Additionally, those who had received massage therapy in the past were significantly more likely than those who had not to believe that massage would be beneficial in their muscle recovery following the race. All right, and by the way, I need to apologize to our listeners because you can probably hear the hail in the background. We've got a hail storm here where I'm recording from, so <laughs> there are, if you hear those uh, loud uh, pops in the background, uh, hopefully my office windows will hold up, so that's the hail storm. So um, <laughs> thanks, Nikki. Appreciate it. So uh, when I first saw this article, I, I thought initially, I, I, I probably incorrectly, obviously incorrectly, I thought, well, it's a study basically looking at how effective massage is in recovery after a running race. But really, it's not about that. It's about the belief. Is that right? Uh, Ruth, can you maybe help me understand um, why someone would study belief over actual effects, or am I misunderstanding this? No, you. your second understanding is correct, which is that this is not a study about whether massage works. It's a study about the questions about whether people think it works. And this is an important piece of information um, really for a couple of reasons. One is it's, there's a whole field of inquiry now about expectations and outcomes. We, we notice that when people expect a positive outcome, they're much more likely to have one than we, when people don't expect a positive outcome. And that's something that um, is true in many settings, massage therapy and psychotherapy and, and a whole slew of others. Um, and so knowing that people you know, by a huge margin, I mean 80%, expect that massage would be effective um, to help them recover from running a race, um, you know, just, just it, that, that gives us a, a really important piece of information that, that there's uh, a high uh, probability of a, of a positive outcome there. But the other thing that the, that the author, the other point the author made that really stuck out to me a little bit was that, the, in, again, in, in lots of different kinds of interventions, the, the more the belief or the more the acceptance of an idea, 
that people have, the more likely they are to be compliant and, and have good follow through and follow the directions for how it will, you know, for how to get the best out of it. In other words, you know, if, if someone comes to see me who, who got injured in a race and I tell them that it's going to take, you know, this many sessions to, or, you know, I, I think it might take this many sessions to see some recovery, if they really believe that I know what I'm talking about and they believe that massage is effective, they are more likely actually to come through for all of those numbers of sessions. So belief correlates pretty well to um, treatment compliance. And you know, for lots of medical professionals, that's a big issue because treatments often fail if the patients are not compliant about it. Okay, interesting. So it's not necessarily saying that massage therapy does or does not aid in recovery. It's basically not even looking at that. It's basically just talking about the belief. And that can be useful to massage therapists, I think. Would you agree? So w what ways do you think this data can be useful to massage therapists who are practicing? Well, I think one of the key points that, that I haven't mentioned yet is that there were some between group differences. And um, some of the between group differences primarily were in the gender. So women were not only more likely to have received massage, but were also more likely to have had a strong belief that it would be effective. And so one of the takeaway points for practitioners that uh, Dr. Marashka highlighted was the fact that it might be harder to get folks to receive uh, that initial massage for, or for recovery or for some other health condition if they're male or if they haven't received a treatment before. So I think a key takeaway from this is that getting folks to receive that initial treatment is going to be really beneficial in them coming again um, either for recovery, something like this, or some other uh, reason. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And that becomes, that becomes a really important marketing piece. Yes. So, right. I mean, really, the, the it, it seems like, well, we see this in, in fundraising as well. Getting someone to donate that first dollar is much, much harder than encouraging them to continue to be donors. Um, getting someone to get on a massage table the very first time is much harder than getting someone to come back. Um, and so, you know, if I were someone looking at building my practice, especially with runners, I would look at this research and think about, well, what are the obstacles? Why are people at the end of this race not wanting to get on my table? Maybe it, you know, and, and, and uh, the author does outline some reasons people don't get massage in general, and we can come back to that. But, you know, maybe that's the next survey question is, if you're not getting a massage after the race today, why not? Um, I was I was actually th when I was thinking about the study I thought a, a, an interesting um, even practitioner led study that might come out of this is for somebody to go to an event like this offer a free session to non users of massage or somebody who's never had massage before and then do some measurements as to whether or not they come back and see them more I mean. I, it just seemed like a real simple, quick thing that would, I think, actually be pretty beneficial to the practice literature. Yeah, I love surveys personally. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd, and I love um, <laughs> gathering data like that. So I, I know the two of you do as well. So <laughs> I, I do want to take a quick break because um, our, our podcast today is sponsored by Anatomy in Motion. And so I want to take just a few seconds here just to kind of talk a little bit about Anatomy in Motion. We, yeah, Ruth's high-fiving me. She loves Anatomy in Motion. Uh, if you're not familiar with Anatomy in Motion, it is a beautiful app. It is gorgeous. Uh, it's available for iPhone and iPad currently, and it's uh, it's basically a medical education app focused on the study of muscles, and it allows you to learn the muscle systems of the body. So it's really ideal for not only massage therapists, but also for doctors, medical students, athletes, coaches, physical trainers, physical therapists, chiropractors, so really anybody that works with the human body in body work, it's a great app. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's on the App Store. And uh, the home base for Anatomy in Motion is really on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook and search for Anatomy in Motion, uh, you should find it there. Um, but like I said, it's a gorgeous app. Uh, it's well worth the purchase. I, I have it personally installed. And I, I, Ruth, I believe you do as well. Um, so we it's really appreciate it. I bought an iPad. Oh, really? It's the reason you bought yeah. an iPad. That's a great endorsement. So uh, and it, really, uh, it really features a diverse kind of curation of the anatomical art and information are really nice nice way that you can use in your massage therapy practice or if you're a student in your in your studies. So uh, be sure and check it out. We really appreciate Anatomy in Motion sponsoring our podcast. Uh, phenomenal app. Go check it out. Um, 
and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So um, thanks for that quick break from our uh, sponsor, which we appreciate. And I want to ask, um, I, since I, I talked a little bit about surveys here about a minute ago and how I, I'm a nerd about surveys and love this stuff, um, tell me about sample size. Looks like in this sample size, um, the survey was with 745 individuals. Um, is that considered a good healthy sample size? Is that low? Is that high? Is that kind of what we're looking for? Well, it certainly depends on the on the question and, and, and what kind of analysis you're doing, but I would say for something that, now while this is not, no, no study is, is simple, but for something that from a time perspective was relatively short, so they I don't know how much how much time do you think they were probably there and able to collect data they were collecting they were talking to people within 60 minutes of them finishing this race so they probably only had two three hours maybe I haven't talked with Dr. Marashka about that but I mean to be able to get 745 respondents in that short a period of time that's that's really impressive <laughs> seems like a lot actually yeah and they and they and they did get um, uh, they were able to get uh, significant statistical significant power and um, p-values with this with 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 these numbers and certainly able to show um, significant differences between their groups okay great um, well I think we've covered some of the key points here but is there anything else you'd like to leave as a takeaway for our listeners who are um, massage therapists thinking okay how does this affect me I know we talked a little bit about some marketing advantages of uh, understanding that um, people do believe that massage therapy can help athletes who are runners specifically and that can lead to um, further business with these athletes and, and really helping them with treatment plans and other areas as well. Are there any other takeaways that we should learn from this? Well Ruth you were, you were going to mention about barriers to receiving massage that uh, Dr. Mareshka talks about. Right. I think that that's um, for, for, for therapists who are really working on building their practice that's where we hone in is is what are the barriers to people receiving massage if they believe it works if they believe it could be beneficial for them why are they not getting it and and the four things that were listed in this and they were they came out of another piece of research so we'd have to go to the bibliography and see what it is I, I didn't write that down I'm sorry but the four reasons that uh, that Dr. Mareska cited for uh, why people don't get massage include um, not being sure it'll be beneficial uh, the ability to locate a therapist, um, apprehension about being touched, and the commitment of time. And I just thought that was so interesting because you'll notice that uh, the barrier of cost is not in this list. Um, that's so surprising to me. And so, um, you know, my inclination would be to dig up what's what's the paper that where this comes from, and to look at you know, and to look at that piece. Um, but to really pursue then, you know, what, how, how as a therapist could I help people bridge these, bridge these barriers? And an example might be, um, you know, if people don't want to get on a table after a race, maybe getting on a chair might be, might feel a little less scary, a little less vulnerable, um, and a little less uh, lengthy in terms of a time commitment. And um, they're already there. Yeah, they're already there, and you know if it's cost effective and um, and in a public setting that feels safe and and secure, you know that's one that's one way. And I know a lot of people do this already, but uh, you know we have some research to 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 really examine if and we need more research to examine why if people believe that massage can be effective for them, do they not pursue it? Well, I'm really. Um kind of surprised at the cost not being a factor. You listed those things and cost is not one of them and that really is interesting to me to point out because how often do you hear massage therapists say, oh I can't get people to pay for massage, they won't put it in their budget, people are worried about the economy or this and that and it seems like we're all kind of fixated on the cost of massage being a barrier to getting more clients but apparently that's not always the case and that's really interesting to, to note I think. Yeah, I'd be really interested to know what the pop, what the sample was of folks where that where that information right, was coming that from. Because that's because that's one of the things that with this particular um, uh, population that Dr. Marashka was 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 surveying, I would imagine that that might not be as much as of a barrier, and that might be making a whole lot of assumptions here. But so here we've got people who are not only um, participating in these 
extra sort of racing pieces that aren't that aren't inexpensive, but also are doing not just. 5Ks, I'm not saying that 5Ks are small, having done a couple of them, whew, um, <laughs> but they're doing 10Ks, so, we're, so we're, we're also seeing that these are folks who are likely um, higher, uh, uh, higher functioning um, and uh, toned, not toned, um, conditioned. There we go. Conditioned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that sounds like another survey for another day. Hopefully, we'll yep. see more of that. Um, but I think we're just about out of time uh, for this one. So, really interesting topic, really interesting insights. Um, Nikki, Ruth, really appreciate uh, both of you sharing. Thank you so much. Oh, so, um, we, yeah, go ahead. Before go ahead, Ruth. We totally wrap this up. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, Al, that Dr. Maraska will be presenting um, on the research track at AMTA National next September in Denver. Awesome. So the listeners are thinking to come to the AMTA. Um, this is a chance to meet Dr. Maraska and maybe you know ask him some of these some of these follow up questions um, based on this survey study that he did. Yes, he'll be doing he'll be reporting on his um, headache study. That's right. He's doing yes. Some great work okay. on headaches and trigger points. Great. Great. Well, there is one more reason to attend national convention in September. So uh, thank you so much for uh, September. Right? Did I get that right? right. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, so, um, just a reminder: if you're watching, uh, we'll definitely put a link below uh, in the blog here to the in the show notes to this article on IJTMB. But if you're listening as well, be sure to go to IJTMB.org, and uh, probably the best way is to search for Moraska, which is M-O-R-A-S-K-A, and uh, look for this article. You'll find it. You can download the entire thing. Uh, be sure and subscribe as well. Uh, just subscribe uh, on the right hand side to the journal. You'll get notified when new articles are are published and uh, it's free so uh, please keep that in mind also it would mean the world to us if you would write us a review on iTunes uh, for this podcast be sure and just pop open iTunes and write a quick review whether you love it you hate it in between give us honest feedback we want that so tell us uh, what you want yeah exactly tell us what you want and you can also email us at perch at massagetherapyfoundation.org so we want your feedback uh, and we'd love to talk about what's important to you so uh, Nikki Ruth thank you so much for joining us today I uh, really appreciate your time, and thanks, everyone, for watching and or listening. We'll see you next time. Next time. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Research Perch. Please send feedback or questions to perch at massagetherapyfoundation.org. See you next time.